So let's say you're given a Sudoku board and you want to figure out how to solve it. Well, there are many different approaches you could take. You could create a simple brute force backtracking algorithm, which is what we're going to do. You could make it more optimized by just checking for certain conditions that will obviously not work. Or you could even train a machine learning model to solve the board for you. So just to keep things simple, we're just going to use the backtracking approach. So we can begin by creating a new class. We'll say class Sudoku. And we'll have a few functions here. So this class is just going to represent our Sudoku board. And in here, we'll include our board itself. And then a few functions, such as checking if a placement of a particular number is valid. And then also a function to solve the board. So we'll say def init. And then we'll give one parameter as board. And we'll say that we want to make sure that this board is a 9 by 9 because that's just going to be the conventional Sudoku board that we're going to evaluate. So assert that length of board is equal to 9. And if this is not the case, we'll just give a message invalid board. And then we want to say for i in board, assert that the length of i is equal to 9 and same message invalid board. So what these two lines are basically saying is that we want to make sure that the number of rows in our Sudoku board is nine, and that we also have nine columns in our board. So once we've made this check, we can just say self.board is equal to board. And then we're also going to maintain a list of the unfilled positions. So the unfilled positions are going to be represented by just zeros in our input, and the filled positions are not going to be zeros. So we'll say self.unfilled is equal to a list of tuples, that'll be a row and column, for r in range nine, for c in range 9, if self.board at index r and c is equal to 0. So that means if it hasn't been occupied. Now that we have this, let's write a few more function headers and then we'll write each one gradually. So we'll first do def is valid and we'll say r, c, and num are our parameters. So this function is basically, and for now I'm just going to put a pass, but this function is basically going to take in a current row and column that we've inserted a number at, and it's going to check to make sure that we can actually do that. And then our next function is going to be our actual solve function. This will be def solve. And this is going to make use of a helper function. So our helper function is just going to be the same thing except with an underscore. So def underscore solve. And here we'll include an additional parameter index. And that's going to represent the current unfilled location that we are looking at in this unfilled list. So we can just put a pass here for now. And finally, we can just do a print board in case we want to print our board. So def print self, we'll just say for row in self.board print row. We may not actually use that, but we'll just keep that here for now. All right, so let's start with the solve function here. So the first thing to note is that if our index is greater than or equal to the length of this unfilled list, so if index is greater than or equal to length of self.unfilled. Then in that case, there are no more unfilled positions. And if there are no more unfilled positions, we can return true because now we have a solved board. So return true. Otherwise, we're going to do some more stuff. So the first thing is we're going to extract the row and column of the current location. So rc is equal to self.unfilled at index. And then we'll say for num in range 1 to 10. So this is just going to iterate between numbers 1 and 9. It's going to try out all those numbers. And to make sure that the number actually works, we'll first assign that position to the number. So self.board at rc is equal to num. And then we need to make sure that it's actually valid. So if it's not valid, then we need to continue. So if not self dot is valid at rc and num, then we can just continue. But if it is valid, then we can proceed to solving the next unfilled position. And so the way we're going to do this is we're going to say if self dot underscore solve index plus one. And so essentially what we're doing here is we're identifying that our solve function has to return either true or false. So we'll say return true here. And then we'll just finish up the function and then explain why we are returning stuff. So outside this, we'll just reset the board location. Self.board at rc is equal to zero, and then we'll return false. So why are we doing all this returning here? So this is actually the key 
element of this algorithm that makes use of backtracking and it's why this algorithm actually works. So when we go to evaluate a particular position's validity, so that's this line right here. If it is valid, then we continue here. And in that case, we can proceed to try and add another number in a different location. And that's what line 22 is doing here. When we say index plus one, we are trying to access the next unfilled location. And so if we keep doing that, and if we keep getting success, we'll ultimately get to a point where we filled up all the positions, in which case we'll just return true. And true indicates that we have a solved board. So if we go all the way and we return true, then each of these solve functions is going to return true. And if that's the case, then we need to return out of the entire thing. But then the backtracking component is when we reset our board location. And when we keep iterating through each of the possible board positions. So that is this loop right here and then line 24. And then we return false when we want to tell the user that a particular board state that we were trying to achieve wasn't valid. So that basically means that if we tried to put a number in a location where it shouldn't have been, then we return false. And so at any point, if this is going to be false, this is not going to return true. So we're going to keep going through different numbers and that covers that backtracking component as well. All right, so now that we've done this, we need to implement the isValid function and then the solve function. So in isValid, we'll just get rid of this. So with isValid, we need to make sure that three conditions are satisfied, that everything in the same row as this number is not this number, and then everything in the same column as this number is not this number. And then also everything in the same box is a different number as well. So first we'll check the row, 4i in range nine, if self.board at r i is equal to num and i does not equal c. So that basically means that if there's a different position in our current row that has the same number, then we want to return false because this means that we don't have a valid board state. Next, we can check the column. We can say for i in range nine. Now granted what I'm about to write, you could combine in the previous loop, but I'm just gonna separate it just to keep it clear. So if self.board at i c is equal to num and i is not equal to r. So in this case, i represents the fact that we are iterating through the rows and that is reflected right here. And if i is not equal to r, that means that we have a different location that has the same number in this column. So return false. And then finally, we can say that we wanna check the box. Now this is gonna require a little bit of mathematical manipulation, but not too much. So in order to check the box, we cannot simply check one dimension, we need to check two dimensions. So the best way to accomplish this is to get the location of the corner of the box that this is in. And to do that, we can just say r corner and c corner is equal to r minus r mod three and c minus c mod three, because each of the boxes is a three by three. So this will work perfectly. Now that we have this, we can loop through the corners and we'll say for tr in range r corner r corner plus three so tr is just temporary r and then for tc temporary c in range c corner and c corner plus three we'll say if the self dot board at tr tc is equal to num so if we found the num and also that it is not the location that we gave so and rc is not equal to tr tc, then that means there was a different location in our box that had the same number. So we'll say return false. And finally, if all of these didn't return false, that means we had success. So this is a valid state. So return true. So the final thing to do here is to implement our solve function. And this is the function that we'll actually be calling. So here, this requires only one line. So we'll just say assert self dot underscore solve at zero and we'll say impossible board otherwise so if we try to solve this entire thing and we end up not being able to solve it if we end up with self dot solve returning a false value that means that we need to give an error because that means we were given a board that is just not possible to solve because this recursion and backtracking algorithm is going to check every single possible state all right, so let's go ahead and test our code. So I've just made a small little script to make sure that our algorithm is correct. So we'll say if name is equal to main, I'll say import Sudoku solver checker. 
and then I'll say Sudoku Solver Checker dot validate. And that's all we have to do here. And in the sidebar, we should see that test cases are starting to be evaluated. So we do see here that it does take some time and that is an issue with recursive backtracking is that because it's checking every single possibility and it's not doing it smartly, there are sometimes many cases to check. But we do see here that eventually all the test cases pass. So that's it for this video and I hope this was helpful.